In July of 2009, I had one of the most powerful experiences of my life. I felt connected to and, and understood by 600 strangers after years of feeling estranged from myself. This happened at, at the annual conference of the National Stuttering Association, an organization whose message is, if you stutter, you're not alone. But up until then, I was alone in my feelings of shame and anxiety and inferiority. At the conference on my first day, the first of the workshops I went to, it was called Fearless Stuttering. And at the end of it, I raised my hand to ask a question. And I stood up to speak. And I just paused. Because for the first time ever, looking out over, over a crowd of people who stutter, I knew that I had all the time in the world. There was no one there who was going to rush me and say, come on, you get it out. Uh, there was no one judging me on how many times I stuttered. And it was a, a moving experience. I started crying. Of course, everybody around me started saying, oh, it's OK, it's OK. You're doing great. Of course, that made me cry even more. <laughs> and that happened for the five days of the conference. Uh, every person I met, I connected to instantly. And we would have these conversations that resulted in transformational realizations. And what I realized was happening is that I was hooked on a feeling. It was a feeling that I now know was something called empathic resonance. And to help understand what I mean by resonance, I made a demonstration video for a type of resonance that you've probably all heard at some point, that is acoustic resonance. Hey, everybody. I'm going to demonstrate acoustic resonance in the shower. First, I'll hum a non-resonant frequency. Then, I'll hum a resonant frequency. The non-resonant frequency is going to sound sort of dead, and the resonant frequency is going to ring throughout the shower like it has extra reverb on it. acoustic resonance. So what was happening at the conference is that I was experiencing a type of resonance in the emotional realm. The, the, the way I look at emotion is it's a material just like the walls of my shower. The material of emotion has vibrating particles. As these particles vibrate, they flow into patterns or emotional states. These emotional states overlap and intersect and together form experiential modes. And if two people who have a similar experiential mode come together, you can get empathic resonance. So I was really hooked on this and I, I went back to conference after conference and after my the third one, I was feeling really, really good, really close to all of my people who, who, who stutter. And I got home, and I crashed very hard. I got depressed. And I thought to myself, how can I keep this feeling of resonance going? And a friend of mine suggested video chats. I said, hey, you know, I'm an early user on, at that time, it was Google's new social network called Google Plus. And they had a feature called Hangouts. Hangouts allows 10 people to see and hear each other in a video chat environment. So, so I started inviting friends on Facebook to come to a Hangout. And it worked. Uh, 
we would have these two or three hour long sessions where we would just go on and on laughing and telling our stories. And it was incredible. And soon after that, I started to get messages from people I didn't know who were, who were, who were asking me, can we join these hangouts? And it was at that time that I realized that there was something more going on here, something that would be beneficial to other people yeah. besides me and my friends. And so Stutter Social was born. A Stutter Social is an online community of people who stutter now in, 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 in more than 50 countries. And we come together up to four times a week across time zones in these virtual support group meetings. Each meeting is hosted by someone who makes sure that we have an environment that is safe, accepting, and engaging to anyone who comes in. And I have a couple of testimonial videos of actual members talking about their experience in Sutter Social. First up is Jacqueline. My, my name, name is Jacqueline Ro Revere. I'm from La, Los Angeles, Chile, and I live in New, New York City right now. My fa favorite thing about Stutter so Social well, would probably be the, the topics that you don't expect to come up, but they, they somehow still relate to stuttering, but Like there, there, there's some of the the same t topics that a anyone would talk about, but there's a new perspective that only you can relate to with others who stutter. And so uh, I, I enjoy those a lot. Jacqueline went from feeling like an outsider to feeling like an insider. And you can hear from the tone in her voice how important that is to her. Next up is William. My name is William Royce. I go as Bill, Bill Royce. And I'm from... Montgomery Village, Maryland. It's one big support group, a global support group. Um, and that's what I love about it. It's particularly good for me because in addition to not, um, in addition to having some speech challenges, I also have physical challenges and I'm disabled and I really can't get around. I can walk a little, have a little bit around my apartment, but I can't walk very well. So it's, it's almost impossible for me to get to local NSA chapters. In this way, I don't have to leave my apartment. I love it. And um, I'm a fan and I'm addicted. So William has gone from feeling that he's isolated to feeling like he's, he's part of a global supportive community. And Stutter Social taught me that you can use technology to build empathic resonance. And after I started seeing that happen, I became aware of other technologies that were doing that too. There was a website called turntable.fm where they created virtual music rooms. Uh, and each room had five DJs on a stage, and then a bunch of people who were listening in the room. And each DJ took turns playing a song, and you would have this experience of sharing the music together. And I had a, a, a favorite room on turntable that was called Stupid People Only. And in that room, there, there, there were no rules. It was just play anything that you wanted and be kind and respectful. And it was a great group of people in there. But they also had a special event called the Bop Mitzvah. 
bopping as in bopping up and down, which would happen if your song is liked, and that then that person's avatar bops up and down. So I, I, I became a man in this room, and I had a bop mitzvah. So it, in turntable, I had a screen name, Rez. So everybody in the chat there is going, Rez, Rez, as though they're <laughs> hoisting me up and down in a chair at my, you know. Um, now, typically, you know, this would just be some text on a screen and not a lot of experience had out of it. But because I had established a basis of empathic resonance with these people based on music and interacting in this chat, as this was happening, I was getting waves of chills coursing over me. And it was an incredible feeling. So now that I'd had these two experiences in the world of stuttering and in the world of musical listening, I began dreaming bigger. How could I create something that could have a wider reaching effect, that could bring empathic resonance to anyone in the, in the world? And the idea came to me while I was on the hunt for tacos. <laughs> I asked a friend of mine who's a native Angelino where I could find the best tacos. And he told me very enthusiastically. And then a couple of weeks later, when I was craving tacos, I went to go and find that recommendation. And I couldn't find it. It was really frustrating because I just wanted these amazing tacos and I couldn't get to them. And I said, there must be an app to solve this problem. And there, and there wasn't really. So I saw an, op an, op an op opportunity here to create something that is useful in the world and to solve a logistical problem. But I got really excited when I realized the potential for empathic feedback loops. Typically, resonance is an additive effect. The vibrational energy of one system becomes added to the vibrational energy of another system. But if you bring in feedback into the equation, the effect is exponential. When you are sharing your love of tacos, for example, you're connecting to that other person and establishing a basis of empathic resonance. The feedback comes in when I taste those tacos, and I love them, and I, and I, I go in and I tell 10 other people about it. And I go back to that person who recommended them in the first place, and I tell her how much I loved it, and I recommend something else to her, establishing our own feedback loop. So, I set out to capture this behavior in an app. And it's called Bester, and I'm building it right now. Uh, Bester is an app where you can ask for and exchange recommendations. You can collaboratively build lists. And you can easily store and share your favorites. And it's my hope that then on Bester, I'll be able to create something using technology that can build empathic resonance to millions. So what does all this empathic resonance give us in the end? Well, for one, it makes people feel a little bit less alone. When you are experiencing empathic resonance, you feel connected to others. You, you, it also opens you up to new opportunities. As you experience empathic resonance, it gets you out of your closed head and into an expanded state. I can't tell you what people are going to choose to do in that expanded state, but the trend has been to have some kind of an, an upshifted evolution. And lastly, and, and most importantly, it creates the opportunity 
to express and feel more love. The love is in you already, raring to get out and express itself. And empathic resonance is its vehicle of expression. And now to conclude, and I know that you're all dying to know, uh, here is my list of the best tacos in LA. <laughs> of course, on top is Grisados. That's my favorite. Thank you.